Hey, Jared here. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the two biggest takeaways I had from the Mindful Eating event last Saturday. And after talking with people who struggle with food, who are open and transparent and willing to work on themselves and share their stories, a couple topics emerged. Those two topics were sugar addiction and self-compassion. So if you do like this video, leave a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Down below is another link about sugar addiction because it's one of the most common topics that I'm starting to run across more and more. Sugar addiction is powerful and it takes a leap of faith to get over it. And I'll go over what that leap of faith means, but first I'll give a big picture understanding of where self-compassion fits in to sugar addiction. See, when you take this leap of faith, which is allowing yourself to eat sugary foods, you're going to not be perfect. You're going to eat more than you thought. You might even gain a pound or two. Probably not much more than that. You might get too full. You might feel like you're doing something crazy. And when these experiences come up where we feel uncomfortable, when we don't exactly have a clear measure in terms of weight, you know, your weight not, might not go down right away. When we are trying something new, when it's unclear, when we're scared, what happens is that these default tendencies of judgment come in and Judgment is the learning killer. Write that down. It is so important we get rid of judgment, that we take away judgment because it is, it's gonna stop you from learning. Because like if you click on the video down below, I, I go over why we need to allow ourselves to eat sugary foods, but it is all predicated on having a self-compassionate attitude to yourself. So if you let yourself have sugary foods and then you judge yourself or you say you screwed it up somehow or you say that you know it, you're you're like a you know, it's like a bad person, right? For having these foods. You feel guilty inside for having these foods. That mindset is going to ruin the whole thing. This whole sugar addiction thing, getting over it, it, it requires balance. First, we need to be we need to be taking care of ourselves. There's no there's no way around it. We need to be sleeping regularly. We need to be eating regularly. Um, we need to be emotionally ready to uh, to change our eating habits. If you're in a if you're going through a life transition in a terrible relationship, if you're if something terrible is happening at work, it's not the right time for you to for you for you to have emotional space. We need you to be. We need you to be stable and, and in a good position. And then we can start allowing yourself to have sugary foods. And when you allow yourself to have sugary foods, you basically get over them. It's, it's just not a big deal anymore. And paradoxically, this is the enlightenment. This is the eating enlightenment. Um, you, you get over them. You eat less than... Um, you eat less than what you were eating before. And I'll, I'll just show you a quick example. Uh, a woman at the event, she brought, um, she brought some uh, sweet like chocolates. And she said, wow, I've never given myself permission to have these before. You know, I've always been at battle with them. And so we, she gave herself permission, she ate them. And you know, the, <laughs> It was an offhand remark that she made, but it just touched my heart and I commented on it at the dinner. She said, um, yeah, these weren't as good as I thought. So sugar addiction, coming back to the first topic, it's, it's hard to understand because you think you're an addict, you think you're addicted to sugar and the solution is to have more sugar. It, 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 it's the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest, weirdest thing. It's to mindfully, carefully allow yourself to have sugar and to notice when it doesn't taste good 
to notice when you don't, when the next bite isn't going to nourish you, when it's not going to bring you any joy to your life. So when we start talking about sugar, it, you know, this, this kind of this balanced mindset, you know, it's, we got to be balanced physically over here. We got to be sleeping and, and have energy and, and be eating regular and, 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 you know, things like that before you, before you handle sugar addiction. If you, so we gotta be balanced, we gotta be balanced physically, but then the mental side over here, that's where the compassion comes in. We can be eating regularly and sleeping regularly, but be the worst critics of ourselves. I am a lot better at this nowadays. Um, when I first got into uh, therapy years ago, is something very, very, became very, very apparent. Um, I am nice to other people, but I am hard on myself. And this is one of the meditations that went over really well at the event. I did a quick little guided meditation about the three parts of mindful self-compassion. And those were, um, those were, ah, what is it? It was, uh, mindfulness and then realizing you're not alone and then directing self-love to yourself and people find this useful because it's oftentimes the third part self-love which can be the hardest and you know for people who who didn't receive enough love in their childhood or they, they can have a really harsh voice towards themselves and so how you practice self-compassion I'll just go really high level thing right here, but the three, the three pillars, um, and I'll do another video explaining this as well, but, um, it's mindfulness. So being present, feeling your body, feeling the emotions, energy, breath, all that stuff. And you find pain, you, you locate pain, you locate tension, stress, pain, it's somewhere in your body. Your shoulders are clenched, your jaw is tensed. You have pain in your heart, maybe anxiety in your gut. You find that pain. And normally you might relate to that pain by pushing it away by thinking you're, you're, you're some, you somehow failed for having the pain. Um, maybe you, uh, y you know, like you're, you, you think you failed that mindfulness even maybe, maybe even you're a lot harsher on yourself. Like I'm not allowed to be unhappy. There's this standard of happiness. And so if you're, if you're broken or wounded somehow, it's not okay to be wounded. That's the judgment. Self-compassion is saying to yourself, it's okay. It's okay. And the example for this is because sometimes when people feel their pain um, and they feel their pain, they, they don't have the ability. They aren't sure how, how, to, how to say it's okay to themselves. So I did a little visualization. This is like at someone's house where... Um, where, what's it called? So we're all around the table, wonderful food, and we do a little self-compassion meditation where we do mindfulness, we, we realize we're not alone, that's the second part. We, we gotta relate to the pain by realizing other people are in the same pain. If the pain was easy to overcome, no one would have the same pain. But because so many people have the same pain, it must mean that it's difficult. Other people have the same pain as you. So it's challenging. It's okay for the pain to be there. There's, it doesn't mean you're a screw up. Other people have the same pain. It's difficult. Life is difficult. And so after realizing you're not alone in your pain, you then direct self-love. You imagine maybe a dog or, or a teacher, a parent, a friend, a, a brother, a sibling, some, some relationship. It doesn't have to be a person or a family member. And you say, and you imagine that person in pain. You know, imagine your brother or whatever loving relationship you have so that, that person or that being is in pain. How do, you, how do you respond? The tone of your voice is probably something like, are you okay? You know, and if the person was beating themselves up, you'd say, don't do that. Don't be so hard on yourself. You would say that and you can tap into that right now. And so when you feel your pain and you realize it's, it's not, you're not the only one feeling pain and you direct that self-love to yourself, that's self-compassion. And this is one of the key things to get over sugar addiction. So um, I'm going to just leave the video at that and we'll resume in another video about self-compassion. All right, peace.